Hello, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I'm Florian from LifeScienceMentor.com and this is another episode of the 180 day idea machine challenge. Today's topic is about ideas. Ooh, ideas. Ideas. And basically how we can generate them more efficiently. Think about 10 ideas to a given topic each and every day. That is the daily mental practice. And if you are in any way like me, then if you try to think about 10 ideas to a given topic, then the first three ideas come very easily to you, right? And then idea number four becomes rather difficult. Idea five to seven are really tough. You need a long time to come up with them. And then at idea eight, things go easy again. So much so that sometimes you're on the roll and you're getting more than 10 ideas. So you easily add more five, six, eight, sometimes over 10, so that you end up with more than 20 new ideas. Why is that the case? I think, as I talked about in my review of the book Incognito by David Eagleman, the thing is that our mind is about like 10% consciousness and 90% unconsciousness or subconscious area. It's like our conscious mind, the ideas that we think we create them, the decisions that we think we make, um, they are basically um, like the like the um, like the um, um, like how you call it the, the cabin where the steering wheel is um, on an ocean on an ocean um, steamboat, and basically ninety percent of everything that's happening in our mind happens without our knowledge. So another comparison is that our conscious mind is like the headlines in newspapers. They only make up like a small part of the total article, but they are present in our minds. So we think, oh, we invent all these ideas ourselves, or all these thoughts and decisions ourselves. When in fact, um, the whole text happens in areas of our mind that we can't readily access. What this means for the creation of ideas, I think, is that our mind works in certain um, themes and topics, right? So the first three topics, three ideas you come up to a given topic, they are they are likely some connected to some memories you had, and then the next idea is the brain starts frantically looking for a new topic it can latch on to, and then once you have that new theme, then you can spout out ideas again. And I think that's one of the reasons why why it's uh, you have like a fast way, like the first ideas are fast, then it gets slowed down, then fast again. Basically, the whole life revolves in cycles, right? Sometimes you can you can get something done very quickly, and then there are days where everything slogs along, and then it goes quickly again. And I think that has more to do with how our subconscious mind proce- processes impressions from the outside than some kind of laziness or demotivation or lack of inspiration. You just have to go through these periods where there is no inspiration and just have to slog through and it gets better afterwards. Based on that, maybe we can design ways to get to new ideas more efficiently, right? Maybe we can design ways to stir our mind in certain directions so that we train our mind to come up with certain topics faster. And, um, and, and that way come up with better ideas. Another analogy I like to, I like to talk about here is um, there is a way in which we, um, in which we assign um, explanation to the things we do. And um, it's, like a, it's like a company that sells products. So the most, the most um, successful companies they sell products because they have a specific purpose behind it, a specific why. They're not selling certain products, they are selling you the philosophy behind, they're selling you their brand. And then it so happens that you like the brand, and then it so happens that this brand has certain products and you'll, you want to get them all. Good example is, um, is Apple, right? So the company um, 
sells you this philosophy, um, this think different, or uh, we want to build, I don't, we want to build beautiful computers, or we, we want to, we, we have all our gadgets have beautiful design, and so on, and so then it happens that you not only buy a computer from them, but also an iPad, an iPod, um, an iPhone, like everything, and that is the same way our mind works. So we first think about the why. Why are we doing something? And then we come up with with the um, with the output of this why. And that was in a talk by Simon Sinek, and I've linked to that talk on my on the corresponding blog post to this to this video. Um, the bottom line is when we find ways to change the why behind our thoughts, then we'll also change the ways we come up with these ideas. And so I tried to come up with several different ways to make the, make the mental practice of 10 ideas per day uh, more efficient. So the first one is to have one weekly, uh, of all the ideas you have, write them down and then have a weekly overview and decide to put one idea of those in motion. What this does is, then these ideas don't stay some bubbles, some abstract thoughts. They, you get forced to put those ideas in motion, at least one of them per week. And so you start, uh, you start um, uh, guiding your mind to think about practicality of ideas. And I think that's immensely important that adds another dimension to our thought process and if we do that over a longer time, always try to put one idea in motion per week. Doesn't need to be doesn't need to be like elaborate. Can be like we just try it out. We find one idea is interesting. We just try it out for an hour or two, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But you know, the ideas that you actually like to put in motion, those are the ideas that you gravitate towards already, right? And then you can you can you can make your mind a little more agile in terms of. Um, executing ideas because no idea is good without any execution people have built great companies on execution of modest ideas i mean look at starbucks the idea was to make coffee <laughs> basically more or less right and they made a very successful company out of that by just adding some nice living room atmosphere to their cafes and made it a place where people like to come so that was a very i mean that was that was not a that was not a not a spectacular idea, right? But you can make a great product out of a very simple idea, and um, that is also that should also be part of the idea challenge. So that's what you teach yourself there. Then number two, um, divide the ten ideas that you have up into five packages of two ideas. So ten ideas kind of seems overwhelming, but if you have one over one overarching theme and then um, and then you come up with subcategories. Uh, for example, let's say, I'm just inventing that out of thin air. Um, let's say 10 ideas, we could, um, 10 different ways to read books. Okay, immediately comes to mind on an iPad or as an audiobook. And then what? Then what? Hmm. Give your book to your grandma and let her read it to you. Um, Take one page a day and um, read it in between. Like you start to struggle there, but if you divide it up into five areas, like um, like first area, reading on different devices. Second area, um, reading in different environments. Third area, um, reading as a competition. Fourth area. Um, rewriting what you've read. Fifth area might be um, design ads for the books that you read. So then, design ads for the book that you read. Well, those will be those could be um, design a newspaper ad or read. A paragraph of each book and send it as an read take take uh, take the ten books you read recently put like take like one paragraph out of these books put them in a newsletter send it to your friends 
as one idea. So then the idea of uh, of um, different different devices for both, like the iPad and um, and on an, on an audio device, and so on and so forth. Right now, you have two things. Now, instead of one category with ten ideas, you have five categories with two ideas each, and then you can easily think about more than two two ideas per category. And you can, if you take like two, three hours time, you can easily come up with a 50 ideas. I kid you not, like 10 ideas, five, one theme, five sub-themes, um, and, then, and then 10 ideas for each sub-theme. There you are, 50 ideas. And um, that way you can, you can really train your mind because, um, because you don't get stuck at one big umbrella. And besides, if you think about 10 ideas, you get through different areas in any way, so five areas out of ten, out of one, divide one subtopic into five sub areas. You will just streamline your own your own thinking process. Idea number three: turning randomly generated words or half sentences into complete ideas. So I got that inspiration from um, there was an article on one of on James Aldrich's blog. Um, talking about how some joke writers have to come up with 70 different jokes per day. And I just illustrated how that would be possible. There's a different way. There's a different, there's another different way. Um, you can just take any sentence from any newspaper, any headline, and, um, and then design an extra, an extra addition to that. Um, so what, if I remember correctly, the, the example sentence they had was, um, Winter is getting so cold in Minnesota, and the next sentence could be um, that the snowflakes have to wear a coat. Something like that, all right? Um, that Santa has to has to clean up the ice, uh, the ice uh, stalactites from his reindeer. Um, that Rudy, that Rudy the reindeer's nose is blue, not red anymore and so on and so forth, right? So if you take one half of, of any sentence, you can kind of easily add another sentence to that and then make a complete idea out of that. If you choose the sentences in your area that you want to think about ideas, then um, 10 different ways to make your morning coffee, right? So then you could choose a newspaper headline that talks about um, good coffee grinder is important for your morning coffee because and, and then you can based on that coffee grinder idea come up with more ideas right um that would be idea number three idea number four is actually very practical um searching for key phrases like i wish i hate i love on twitter or on reddit and i think that idea came from gary vaynerchuk in one of the clips he had online so you search on twitter and if people say, oh no, that was MJD Doesn't mind. doesn't matter who says it, you search on Twitter for I hate, I wish, I love, oh, if ever, something like that, right? So people say, I hate packing my stuff before I move. Great. There's a business idea for you right there. I mean, you could offer a service where you pack people's stuff, then they move it themselves, but you take care of putting all the clutter into all the boxes. Or you could offer a service where you where you would um, uh, where you would wrap people's presents, right? So I, I would definitely use a service like that um, because my my present wrapping is really, let's say, it has its own charm. Um, it's far away from perfect. So that would be that would be an idea. If if you go for ideas that are based on people's pain points, then you already have ideas that you can apply. In reality, and, and make a business out of that, right? And um, of course, not every idea is good enough for a business. But come on, if you do that for a year every day, you'll have three thousand five hundred ideas that are always coming from somebody, some some need out there. And nowadays, it's so easy to start your own. I mean, not easy, but it's so has so little overhead to start your own internet company or your own blog. Is that's basically a very easy way to to start something new. Number five, writing ideas as part of free writing practice in the morning. And that's what I do. So when I get up, um, I run some errands and then I sit down and I just write what comes to mind. And, and, and lately I've just used the, um, the, the 180, idea 180 day challenge 
Like every day another topic and then I write 10 ideas for that topic in the morning. A, your mind is fresh and B, you write it for yourself. You're not judgmental because you write it for yourself and then in the end you have the draft. So um, that I can really recommend anyone who wants to become a writer, who wants to start writing, find a way to do that the first time in the morning. For me, if I do it in the evening, it doesn't work half as well. Because in the evening, I already have so many impressions in my mind that I, it's tough. first it's tough for me in the evening to find the, to find the focus, to really only look at that one task, writing down the ideas. And B, these ideas will all be tarnished by, by stuff that has happened over the day. So in the end, you easily end up with just with a to-do list of things that you needed to finish over the day and then that somehow influences uh, uh, how your ideas are. That's not good. You want to have it really fresh. And the best time to do that is in the morning. And besides, spend an hour writing on 10 ideas, flesh them out a little bit more. So I usually take half an hour to think about ideas. And then I flash them out for another 30 minutes. And that's basically how the drafts of these blog posts I'm presenting to you come, up, come to be. So one hour for the first draft in the morning. Then I'll put it normally into Word. Add maybe an idea or, an, or throw an idea out that doesn't really work. So basically edit that draft and then edit the third time where I look for grammar errors or spell check and you know and, and then I publish it. And that works very well. And believe me, you've done you've done that, like you've written one hour in the morning, you already have something done. No matter how bad the day goes, you have already written in the morning and, and if all else fails, you already you are already producing something in the morning for yourself. So Write ideas as part of free writing practice in the morning. Um, turn ideas, that would be number six, turn ideas you had the day before into new ideas. So the, uh, the thing is here that you can have, as I said before in the introduction to this video, that uh, our mind thinks in, our subconscious thinks in some, yeah, it comes up with a theme or a topic and then you design ideas to that. So you're still on a topic from the from the day before, and then you just invent new variations of that topic. It comes across as a new idea to you, but you basically trick your mind into adopting some underlying underlying take home message from the ideas you had yesterday and apply them to today's theme. You get new ideas. Number seven, imagine yourself in the future and in the past. Would your ideas be different? And so the idea is that you eliminate influences from the environment. For example, um, if you assume the year is 1935 and you want to think about ideas how, about different ways how to deliver books, so there would be no ebook because the concept of, a, of TV is just starting to, gain, to, to come up. They're early adopters who have a TV in their home. TV is not by no means mainstream. Maybe I'm off a little bit. That's how it was in Germany. I think in the US, TV came up a little bit earlier, but still, it was by no means mainstream. So thinking about you can read letters off a screen is very far-fetched for 1935. So that idea is out. But I can think about in 1935, different ideas to deliver books. Probably come up with audiobooks because the radio is there and the gramophone is there. So they're relatively fresh, but then I would think about if I was if the year was 1935, I would think about, hey, maybe we can have somebody read the books to us and then have that over radio. Right? Um, or I would have another idea. Um, maybe I would have the ideas to deliver book chapters with the local newspaper, right? And then I would that would mean that people read a chapter of a book and then they want to see the next chapter so they'll be sure to buy the next the next um, um, the next next day's newspaper right or if it's like a weekly journal they'll buy that because you provide them with a chapter and have a cliffhanger and they want to see how the story continues so okay so I come up with that idea in 1935 I would have the idea have the story in the newspaper and have episodes like each week a new episode. So now I can take that idea 
to the present, right? I could think about, hmm, if I have an email newsletter, which I actually have, you can sign up um, if you want. And in this newsletter, I could actually put a chapter from a book, right? And then I could have the next chapter from the book, next newsletter, right? And that way I could also be have that news that, that email newsletter more engaging for people, right? People are more people are more willing to to follow because there's an interesting story that that, that I'm telling or like an interesting interesting book that I'm basically um, showing abs excerpts of, and then the next chapter people want to know what the next chapter is, and so on and so forth, right? No idea whether that's a good idea, but that would be one idea I wouldn't have had easily if I had stayed in the present, right? So I go back to the past, develop some new ideas that have nothing to do with any environment. I have to really focus on the idea itself, and then I just transport that idea in the, in, into the present. And if I think about, if I imagine myself in the year 2050, I would probably assume that there are that there are holographic projections of books. So people could have electrodes. You have these devices that um, that read your mood already, right? It's like like a like a band around your around your forehead. And I'm sure in a few decades you'll have um, you have versions where people have like an elastic band and it's full with electrodes and it measures your your um, your brain currents, right? So if you had a if you had glasses with a heads up display that are connected to to these electrodes, then you could have um, a book chapter delivered to you, displayed to you, depending on your mood, right? So you would just hit on surprise me from the software in the glasses, and it gives you a book on your head up display that just recognizes the mood you're in and suggests a book for you, or if you are scared because you're in a dark alley and somebody is maybe following you, it could all of a sudden display, um, uh, you know, the next, the next information, what to do in emergency cases, where the next police station is, and so on and so forth, right? So that would be an idea I would have if I imagine myself in the future. And um, maybe that idea is to, to, it can be implemented much easier than thought. So that way I vary... I vary my dependence of my ideas from the environment and come up with new ideas that I wouldn't if, I had, if I'm staying in the same environment, in the same present tense, all the time. That would be number seven. Number eight, imagine one of your ideas has been solved. So how would the other nine ideas now look like? Right? Um, it would possibly turn a new host of possibilities. One of them is solved, so some others which were redundant versions of the first ideas, become obsolete. And another set of ideas that builds on the first idea will now, will now, be, will now be able to come up with additions to those ideas, right? That's another way of coming up with different, of like making the generation of ideas more efficient or more interesting. Number nine, which ideas would you sell to someone else? And how would your sales pitch be? So, first of all, you know which idea you want to use for yourself. Those is, this is the idea you really want to focus your efforts on, if you want to put any idea in place. And those ideas that you want to sell, now you have to think about a good elevator pitch to, to tell in a succinct way what your idea is all about. And that can be helpful, and can be helpful as well. And then imagine yourself, number 10, in somebody else's skin. So what are the ideas that person would come up with? So in that way, you would combine the daily mental practice with the daily emotional and even spiritual practice. Because in the end, it's all about serving needs. We all want to produce value. We all want to give to others so they can give back to us. And we want to be the ones who give. So with those ideas, the same way that I'm doing this, to give you some inspiration and share some of my ideas with you, that you can then feel free to use them for yourself. If you see it, if you see them, um, if you see them as successful ideas, or uh, feel free to do that by all means. Um, and when I'm training myself to think more in somebody else's shoes, what ideas that person will come up with, 
then I would actually then I'll I can actually have a very powerful combination of all the emotional, spiritual and mental, maybe even physical practice when I get to these ideas while I'm while I'm running outside or something like that. Right? So so that's another way to come up with better ideas because now my ideas are not in a vacuum anymore. No, no, they apply to a specific situation of somebody else, right? So and they're directly geared to help somebody else because I imagine those would be the ideas that person comes up with. And sometimes we see things about other people that they don't see themselves. So it's immensely useful to do that practice. And I believe in the second leg of the 180 day challenge, you get to send your ideas to someone else or design ideas for someone else. Um, I'm actually looking forward very much to that and thinking about doing ideas for somebody else is an efficient way to come up with useful ideas um, that are that have the biggest potential of being helpful. And those are 10 ideas how to get more efficient with your idea generation. I hope you liked it. Um, hit the like button on the YouTube channel when you enjoyed it. And um, otherwise, I wish you a nice ending to Thanksgiving and um, I'll be glad to see you again tomorrow. Leave me a comment if you liked it. I'll answer every comment that you make and either on YouTube or on the corresponding blog post to this video. And anything else, see you again tomorrow and have a nice weekend. Goodbye. Different music. You know what that is? YouTube surprises you sometimes, but these are the Enigma Variations by Elga. Check it out. It's really, really nice.